Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix Online Meeting 177. We're on our way into the end of September. Happy September to you. Uh, we're going to have a short meeting, I expect. Most of the excitement was in the last meeting. Well, what are we talking about today? We're going to talk about uh, Wix 3.11.2 was released. Yay, I guess. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. And then we'll do triage, which will be a pretty short experience given the list that I can see uh, looking ahead a little bit. Um, and then we'll do questions and comments. Uh, for those of you that are with us right now, uh, these meetings are recorded, put up on YouTube for later. So um, if you, uh, so don't say anything bad while we're here. All right, let me go talk about 3.11.2. 3.11.2, the whole purpose of it was a security vulnerability was reported uh, to Fire Giant, uh, the zip slip attack vector that affected the DTF compression of cabs and zip files. Um, you can go read more about it in the WIP 6075. It has all the details, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, 3.11.2 was released last week. Yay! Uh, September, is it 19th, 18th? I forget if it was 18th or 19th. It was last week. Um, and we've had about 800 to 11,000 or 1,100 downloads um, at this point uh, based on few of the stats we have. So it looks like people are trying it out. Um, and I think probably the best thing we can say about it at this point is that no news is good news. Everything's good, right? I think people would be screaming if it didn't work. Um, and we have validated the security fix and actually one of Fire Giant customers has also said that they saw it too, so um, that they validated it. So that's all good, I think. I guess maybe there is a little bit of news that is good news. That's it. I don't really want to talk about 3.11.2. More distractions on the way to doing Wix 4.0, um, but there it is. I think we'll go triage the rest of issues. Bob, you ready? As you can be. Wow, so so much um, enthusiasm. All right. Oh, I see. I see. I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, so we're not going to talk about these version ID things. We will again, but not right now. And then the burn HTTP, HTTPS redirects. Um, I think the only question on this was that, yeah, this has already been accepted into uh, 3.14. And the question was, was it in 4.0? And we went and looked, and Wix 4 is already in, implemented as well. So I think we're done with this. Right? Label it with burn and close it, and we're good to go. Yay, that was easy. Um. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about? Oh, Jacob made it. Yay, I didn't even see it. Uh, but had the comment wrong, or do you see it? No, didn't see the tie to the – Jacob, we did not see the tie to the um, issue. So, uh, but it is in – Getting that syntax in uh, GitHub is a little bit interesting when you're reaching across repos. So Wix tool set slash issues pound the number should do it. Um, anything else people want to talk about? Anything? Quiet out there? Not a lot going on? You do have questions on burn variable types. Oh, yes, I saw some of your comments on the mailing list, and I'm like, yeah, that's the way variables work right now. Um, well, Jacob, it is the end. This is the time for questions and comments. So uh, if you want to get them in, now's the time to start typing. Um, but quick summary, Jacob is looking at the way that you can change the type of a variable from, for example, numeric to string, and uh, burn will let you do that without issue, and it does. It actually does coerce types quite um, readily, as you wish. And if you want to get rid of a variable out of burn, you send a string in that's null, and that will make the variable disappear, um, even if it's a numeric variable. And that is the very, I don't know, that's not an untyped system. What is that, a weakly type system? Um, highly coerced? What was that, Bob? Yeah, so it's just a little weakly typed at best. Yeah, so you can say what you want, and then you can try to get strings as numbers, and that won't work, and you can all that kind of stuff. So um, 
if it is a number, sorry. Right. It just sets everything as a string. Uh, I that I think that would be fair. If you, I don't know that you can tell that a variable's. Can you get a variable's type without? Can you get a variable's type? I don't know that you can. Um, you can just ask for it and as a number or as a string or whatever. But I don't think you can say, "Hey, give me this variable. Is it a number?" Um, the type system isn't. The meta of the type system isn't provided in that way. And I believe. Yeah. Um, and I believe the the reasoning behind the command line interface was that everything as a string would be, well, at least you can get it all in to burn. And then your BA, not Wix standard BA, because it's not smart enough to do this, but an, another BA could then um, at least be able to get the value and show it to the user and say, hey, user, you put foo in here, but I wanted a number. So if we didn't allow the string if we didn't allow uh command line options to get to change the type or to get set through then you'd have to throw away the number or throw an error at the command line parsing which is not a great place to halt at all um and so that was the idea is that hey we'll let the variable go through and then if you really want to check its type to validate it you'll be able to at least get the string value that the user provided if they overwrote it Right, because hey, it'll be a string. <laughs> and it, right. And and I get the well that's not a very strong type system and the answer is no, burn's not that strong a type system in there for you. Yeah, Jacob, I, I appreciate it catches you off guard. It's it's a I mean it is. It's you know, we could remove the type from the variable definition and then it would just all be, yeah, we'll just coerce it as best we can. Right? And just say, Yeah, there is no type. Um, but I think it's actually more efficient. I I the system is, you know, it's a union underneath in the end. So it's more efficient if we know the type when we can store a whole bunch of numbers as numbers as opposed to always storing them as a string and then always turning them back into a number um, if you want to do that. Yes, but if version always starts with a V, then, you know, if you say that that's the way that is syntactically done, then there you go. You can always turn that back into a version number. Um, yeah, so if you set a type, then we will prevent you from doing anything else. And if you leave it as any, then it will, you know, be a variant and change as you want. The, it's just the 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 scenario that always comes back is the command line gave you bad data, 
And how do you get that bad data then? How do you show the user a useful error message? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, the system today is optimized around that other solution. And the case sensitivity of variables uh, is an interesting, you know, we could have made them case insensitive. Um, I don't know why we didn't. No, we don't do that with burn. Burn has the overridable. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm, so let me back up a little bit. We had scenarios that when we first put this together that um, got manifested in the current implementation. If someone said, you know what, there's uh, areas in that manifestation that are not ideal, let us uh, fix those, then that would be great. We should think about the implications of changing them as a whole, I think is where it would go. And if someone wants to sit down and think about the burn variable system and how to improve it in four, I, uh, we could entertain that. But right now, the behavior you're seeing, I believe, is very much expected. There is. There is. Yeah, the the so Jacob, the case where you the engine you can set a variable as a number, um, and that returns an HR, it will set it. That HR essentially is if you're um, out of memory. I think. I mean, that's about the only way that comes back is. Well, no, I guess it'll try to. No, because you're passing a number in at that case. So in the end, it turns into. Um, uh, the the HR can only be you know out of memory is about the only error that you're going to get from that one if I remember correctly. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, so we can return an error to the BA when they try to set it. Right, and that's what J that's what Bob is bringing up. If you know the ability to say, "Hey, yeah, don't try to coerce this thing," and then return a like an E invalid type, if that's a real HR, um, I don't think it is, but um, some value that says, "Yeah, no, you can't pass a number to a thing that has been explicitly marked as a string." Yep, I mean, all of these things are things we could you know uh, enhance the burn uh, variable system if we wanted. I don't even know what that means. Oh, you don't hear anyone but me. Really? Well, I can hear everybody, but that doesn't really mean anything since I'm at control center. Um, well, this could be a very interesting recording. Uh, <laughs> if there's only me on it, it's going to sound like I'm talking to myself. That will be weird. Um, it'll be like every, like every other Twitch channel out there. Um, I'll be reacting to the voices in my head. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay. Um, I am mildly sick. You may have been able to hear that. So I think that comment is a great place for us to end. Unless Jacob has anything else that he'd like to uh, walk through on the um, uh, question comment. Um, I think the net um, answer is uh, if you want to change the variable system, let's talk about it in a holistic kind of view and think about all these edge cases. Yeah, now's the time. Mix for a all right, uh, I think we'll call it good. Uh, we'll be back in, I think, two weeks. That sounds good, right? October, holy cow, October 10th? Wow, it's already October. Uh, that's a little surprise, or it will be October. It's not October yet. Um, all right, so on that note, uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Until then, you guys have a good one. Bye. <laughs>